Hi, everybody. My name is Amir, and today I'm here with Bo, Marcus, and Sushmita. And we're going to go over our project, which is the pricing audit with Harbor Wholesale Foods Incorporated. Um, before I begin, I would like to thank Harbor Wholesale Foods and the CBA team at UW Tacoma um, for giving us this opportunity and this chance to uh, learn with a real life example. So a little bit about us, we have Marcus Erlander. Um, he did a lot of fantastic work in R. Uh, Sushmita Srinivasan, um, she did a lot of the heavy lifting in SQL and Power BI. Um, Amir Imsik, that would be me, and I did quite a bit of work in Azure ML Studio and some Azure Cognitive Services. Uh, Bo He did a lot of our descriptive analytics and helped a lot in R and Power BI as well. Now a little bit about Harbor. Uh, they're a mid-sized convenience store distributor. Um, they have thousands of items and um, they distribute to local stores and chains. Um, they're family owned and they're headquartered here in Lacey, Washington. Um, during our project, they actually acquired Food Services of America. Um, so that was a very awesome thing for, uh, for them. And, uh, it happened sort of midway through our project, so it, we were really, really um, happy for them. And this is our presentation agenda, what you're going to find throughout this presentation. Uh, we'll go through a project description, a technical solutions and findings, and finally business recommendations to Harbor. So our business problem was a pricing audit. Um, as I mentioned before, Harbor has thousands of items that they sell to um, a lot of customers. And we all know the more moving parts you have, there's more likely something can go wrong. Um, so our job was to identify pricing errors in their system and develop a predictive analysis tool to validate um, any pricing inaccuracies. Um, and our final end goal was to provide an error reducing mechanism leading to business process improvement for Harbor. This is what our four quarters look like throughout the year. Um, we start off with a data management plan and a project scope. Uh, second quarter involved data discovery and some descriptive and diagnostic analysis. Uh, third quarter was predictive analysis and building models. Um, and fourth quarter was putting it all together and providing Harbor with business recommendations. So this is kind of our discovery phase. Uh, we had to review current procedures, anything that Harbor had in place um, before we started to see what they were doing and whether we could use any of that to our advantage. Um, second off, we had to gain an understanding of the problem. Um, we had to define what a pricing error was. It wasn't um, clearly stated and it's hard to do. So how do we find those pricing errors? And lastly, we had to explore possible solutions. Um, There's so many tools out there and ways we could have done this, but we needed something that uh, we knew we could do in our scope of time and something that we could hand over to Harbor um, so that they could use in their business process. Our next steps were the data modeling, and this involved developing ways to validate pricing accuracies. Um, we built some models for price prediction, but later on we also built models for uh, pricing anomalies. And throughout the, the, throughout the year, um, we shared all of our findings with Harbor, and um, they were super, super help, helpful, and we used any feedback that they gave us to improve those models uh, throughout the year. Um, these are some of the tools we used. We used Power BI. Um, Sushmita will talk about that very soon here. Uh, our studio, which Marcus will cover, um, Azure ML Studio and Microsoft uh, Cognitive Services. And we also used the SQL Server Management Studio for all the database um, stuff. And now I will hand it off to Marcus, who will take you through an R demo. Okay, uh, thank you, Amir, for that outline of our project uh, that we were able to work on here for Harbor Wholesale. Uh, for people who like data, there was a whole lot of data here to work with, so it was, really was an exciting project for us. Um, 
so when we started off this project, we had this question, which was, uh, what kind of uh, what kind of algorithm can we develop that will help identify um, uh, unexpected prices that come out of uh, Harbor's pricing system uh, before it gets to a customer? And that raises a whole lot of different possibilities. Uh, one way you might do it is if you had a big set of error data from the past that showed situations where prices had gone wrong and you could take that data and you could sort of feed it into a machine learning model and it could find the patterns in that data and extract it out and then use that to apply to new prices and see how similar they are to that error data to try to identify new errors as they come into the system. That's what we'd call um, a supervised machine learning model. And that's not what we did here because we didn't have that data. So um, in that case, you're looking into unsupervised machine learning. And uh, that brought us, uh, we did some research on different ways of doing that. And it brought us to this idea of anomaly detection. Um, so here on the screen, um, this is just a fun little illustration of uh, this concept of uh, outlier detection. This is from a book by John Foreman called Data Smart. And he uh, talks about the scene from The Lord of the Rings, where there are the four hobbits, and then there's the four giants, and in the middle uh, is Gimli, who's a dwarf. And uh, he said it was, um, as a, I guess as a data scientist, his thought was, oh, that's interesting. The outlier here is the dwarf um, instead of the giants or the hobbits. So uh, that is actually kind of applicable here because, um, you know, we can look through all this data and say, well, here's the highest prices and here's the lowest prices. And when you have thousands and thousands of them, um, you can find one that seems unlikely. Uh, but they already know what their highest prices are and their lowest prices. So we're trying to look for outliers that might be in the middle of the data uh, based on specific characteristics of the product or other factors um, that would make us uh, think that that was an outlier. So that takes us to our studio. As Amir said, I did a lot of my work in R. And um, up here, you can see a dashboard that we created in R. So the basic process is um, we would create uh, a model that price that you would expect for something. And then we would look at the results of that model and see how far off they came. Uh, and you would find the price that was sort of the most different from what it was predicted. And you would look at it and say, oh, well, that's just because of uh, X, Y, Z reason. And you could see that um, right away. And so then you go back to the model and you adjust it a little bit so that uh, it accounts for that. And you run the model again. And then you look again, you say, oh, well, that's just for this other reason. And so you go back and adjust the model again. So basically it's this sort of iterative process of uh, creating and adjusting models. And it turned out um, that that is kind of time consuming when you have to code everything each time you do it. So we created this dashboard basically to make that process easier, um, but it came out uh, looking kind of neat. And so uh, we thought that they might, uh, the client might um, uh, be able to use this on an ongoing basis. So basically what this does is you can plug in the different variables here. Um, I have dummy data in here uh, for privacy reasons, um, but basically you can put in the variables. So there's a whole lot of them that we created for this, but here up, up, up on the screen right now, I have um, the residual. So that's the, the difference from the predicted price. And then we have the price prediction and it's colored by the week here. So basically you could go and look at this and say, oh, well, here's one that is um, out of the norm. So you can actually click on that and then you can see information about that specific um, price uh, down below in the screen. Um, and if you wanted to sort of drill into this because it's kind of densely packed on here, um, you can actually go and say, okay, I want to look in that region and drill in and you can see the pattern there more clearly and look at those prices to see what's going on. Um, so that is one way that you can look through the data that we created for them. And there's a lot of different filters and other things on here to make that work better. Uh, some of the other features on this are there's a lookup. So that's where you want to look up a particular product and see more information about it and prices um, that it has had over time. Uh, the word cloud, you can, it basically just gives you a sense of the um, categories of items that you're looking at here on the graph. view. And then finally, the similarity um, is just a little bit different, but that was where we looked at 
um, this question of uh, what if you have two different prices and there's just like one letter that's different between them, um, but the prices uh, might be quite different. And so that might be a typo or some other little thing that you might want to be able to identify. So there's um, a few different features here that might make this useful, but the concept really uh, in working with R was that we would do the analysis there and then pipe it on uh, to other systems that are a little bit more flexible um, to build different kinds of dashboards and do different kinds of analytics on an ongoing basis. So with that, I'm gonna turn it on to Sushmita who has created some really uh, awesome uh, uh, visuals in Power BI. Thank you, Marcus. This is a demo of how we visualized the predicted model that uh, Marcus did in R in Power BI. Power BI is a user-friendly tool, and um, from Power BI, um, so to Power BI, we have directly uh, connected the amazing Marcus's model uh, through SQL um, to Power BI. So this is a dynamic modeling. This page talks about how we portray the anomaly score with respect to every feature. And here you can see the anomaly score with respect to unit of measure, here price, uh, customer price category, and um, the postal code. And this is a very uh, familiar uh, scatter plot of uh, the actual price and the predicted price. And you could see some outliers right away, which uh, should be the anomaly. And um, so this tells you the anomaly score of item and item brand. So this is item brand. And once you dig deeper, um, it tells you what item uh, it is in the brand, and then you could see um, the variation of predicted price and the actual price for it. And you could dig deeper to see what the cost is and the other uh, features of the price are for that particular item. And uh, this shows uh, the customer uh, higher, I mean, how the anomaly is for each and every customer. Moving on, this is a very interesting. Um, visualization in uh, Power BI, where it automatically goes and looks into the complete data to see what influences the price anomaly and what influences the price anomaly to decrease, increase, and you can uh, choose what influences to decrease. And uh, so here for the privacy reasons, we have just chosen the postal code and haven't displayed any uh, increase or decrease in price and the percentage of uh, how it affects. But in general, you can choose whatever. I mean, you can choose it based on the customer and you can choose it based on item and whatever feature you choose, um, the details would be uh, displayed here with respect to that. And the same here, it uh, shows um, which uh, factors likely increase or decrease the anomaly. Moving on, uh, this uh, is a decomposition tree uh, visualization uh, where it's the same concept. You could choose a particular uh, feature and you could decompose uh, or, or, um, or the tree based on the features that you choose. For example, you could choose whatever feature you want and then you could again uh, decompose it uh, to whatever level you want um, till uh, yeah, whatever uh, path you want to go. And uh, so this is something uh, we developed as a part of our cognitive analytics. Um, so here, uh, this uh, let us uh, choose whatever feature you want. For example, here you could uh, have a customer number or you could choose here and uh, choose a customer number or an item number and see what the anomaly score would be for it. And you could dynamically send an email to the person from uh, here. Um, and uh, so this is actually done through Power App, which is directly connected to Power BI uh, dynamically. Uh, so that's all from Power BI. This is how we uh, visualize the uh, uh, predicted data and now moving on Bo will uh, talk about the business suggestions that we have come up with for Harbor. Thank you Sushmita. Based on our observations and analysis we come up with some suggestions for Harbor's business development. Implement in Power BI. As you already seen the model dashboard in Power BI. We suggested that Hubbard could use this model for continual review of pricing analytics. Consult and optimize. 
The prediction methods developed here should be compared to Hubbard's actual pricing methods and procedures and updated accordingly so that the predictions can be optimized. Apply to incoming data. A process for applying the predictions developed here to new incoming data is necessary. Expand scope. What we show here is just the analysis from one product category and the state of Washington. Once optimized, these methods could be applied to Hubbard's entire transaction data. Model unit relationships. Many products are available in different units. A specific test could be developed to compare the base price in different units. Track errors to continue improvement. Hubbard should begin to track errors that are uncovered directly as intended or indirectly raised by clients so that the model can be continued optimized for sensitivity and specificity. Again, we sincerely thank our client, Harbor Wholesale Foods, for providing this unique opportunity for us to learn and help with the business. Also, we would like to thank Center for Business Analytics at the University of Washington, Tacoma, for bridging our team and Harbor. Thank you for your listening.